All right, Andy Johnson, we're talking about motivation and emotion. Motives are basic needs or desires that cause a person to act. Basic needs or desires, they determine our goal-oriented behavior. <clears throat> now, motivation, then, is an internal state that causes us to do something, to act or to maintain or sustain a behavior towards a particular goal. <clears throat> Rewards and punishments, otherwise known as consequences, that occur as a result of behaviors can be important regulators of motivation. We're motivated because of the consequence, both reward and punishment, all right? But they're not good for sustaining motivation. That's short-term motivation. Value expectancy equals motivation. If we value the behavior, if we expect to succeed at the behavior, we are motivated. If we value the learning goal, if we expect to succeed in the learning goal, we are motivated. If we value reading, if we expect to succeed in reading, we are motivated to read. If we value that mathematics or science learning, if we expect to learn, we are motivated. If value or expectancy are zero, motivation is zero. And students with learning disabilities, that expectancy, they expect to fail. We have taught them how to fail. Why is motivation important? It is highly correlated with persistence. Highly made motivated students will persist longer with more difficult tasks. Also with achievement, highly motivated students tend to achieve more. Now, do they achieve more because they're highly motivated or are they highly motivated because they achieve more? A little bit of both, but motivation is an important part of achievement. Intrinsic motivation is that the desire comes from within. They want to learn. They're not being controlled or manipulated to learn. That is the educational ideal. Basic law of the universe. Nobody is interested in learning things that are not of interest to them. So, clue, we have to provide some sort of interesting educational curriculum. It's hard to be interested in learning things in which or of which you are not interested. Extrinsic information, you do something for a reward or to avoid punishment. Much of education today is reliant on conformity. We control and manipulate to get students to do our learning. Intrinsic motivations, however, promotes more learning and deeper learning. So the goal is to try to create education that is intrinsically motivating, that is interesting. Yes, we can align education with students' interests and ways of doing. Yes, not everything, but many things. Students, human beings, are motivated by a couple things, by having choice and autonomy. And again, this doesn't mean total choice and autonomy all the time, but neither does it mean no choice and no sense of autonomy. Students motivated by choice, it could be a choice of topics or subtopics within a topic, ways to learn. How do you best learn? How do you want to demonstrate your learning? When would you like to learn? Would you like your reading in the morning? Or in the afternoon. Some choices, some of the time. <clears throat> so, theories of motivation. Cognitive theory says essentially, <clears throat> and I'm boiling it all down to one sentence, human beings are motivated by drive reduction, this disequilibrium. They encounter something that doesn't fit, uh oh, I gotta figure that out. And it's that to reduce the drive of confusion, that's what motivates learning. And human learning is some of that. Behavior theory. Humans motivated by earning rewards and avoiding punishments. Hmm. If I learn this, I'm going to get a good letter. If I learn this, I won't get a bad letter. There's some of that. Humanistic theory. Humans are naturally motivated, naturally inclined to evolve, to learn, and to evolve to their highest state. I tend to believe it's more of number three and some of one and two. If we would design our educational systems to be more of number three and less of number two, we would have much more efficient uh, learning. Learning becomes magic when it's aligned with students' natural inclination. Self-efficacy. You believe you can do it, you expect to do it. And again, self-efficacy is related to motive or motivate or motivation. 
So to improve self-efficacy, the belief that you can do something, we have to teach at students' instructional level and use scaffolding to enable them to do a task. We cannot and should not teach failure, which with students with learning disabilities is what we teach for six hours a day. Big ideas. Find interesting stuff they will learn. Don't frustrate our students. Zone of proximal development, get a little ahead of them and use scaffolding. And again, humans have a natural inclination and tendency to learn. Good teachers are conditioned creators. We don't have to control and manipulate students to get them to learn. We create the conditions in which students want to learn and learn naturally. We are working with human beings, damn it! Not training lab mice.